Hello. All right. So, hello everyone. How's it going? Today, for the entirety of this video, I'll be sitting on the bare floor because I am in pain. I am in pain and I have no words to describe all the feelings that I'm feeling right now. All the emotions that I went through. The way I knew some things were about to happen and yet, tragedy has struck once again. You know when you have read that certain book and it hits you in such an unexpected way, it just, it just hits different. Today, I will be making a full dedicated video to just one book. One book, basically going back to the early days of booktube where we essentially made book reviews for every single book that we have read. But this video in of itself isn't really a review per se. I was not expecting to be blindsided and hit over the head by this book. It was... It was truly unexpected. Obviously, you already know which book it is by now. Today, I'll be discussing The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Oh shit. You're still good. This fucking book truly wrecked me in the best and worst way possible. I hate you, but also I still love you. But really, even though I had the worst time reading this book, especially towards the end, I also had a glorious time reading this as well. And speaking of time, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Nordgreen. So Nordgreen is a Danish sustainable watch company brand. I have worked with Nordgreen previously before and I love the look of the overall watches, their style, as well as what they represent as a brand. So Nordgreen reached out to me again and I picked out a different style of watches from their selections. I opted for something much more smaller and minimal than the other watches that I own. And this time I picked out one of their native watches. I picked out the 28 millimeter rose gold with the brown leather strap, which also came with an additional leather strap. And I chose the black leather strap with rose gold. One of the cool things about Nordgreen is that they really care about the environment and sustainability. A few of the ways of how Nordgreen cares about its environment and its people is that one, all of their packaging is sustainable. They are made of upcycled bottles and FSC certified cartons. They're also a carbon neutral shipping partner by offsetting their carbon emissions generated by their offices in Copenhagen by planting thousands of trees. And last but not least, one of the best and cool things about Nordgreen is their giving back program. With each product or watch that you purchase, you can choose one of the three global NGOs to donate to. Pratham UK, Cool Earth, and Water for Good. In 2020, Nordgreen donated more than 40,000 months of quality education, 87,000 months of clean water, and protected over 1,600,000 square meters of rainforest. It's just one of the few aspects on why I love Nordgreen and what they stand for. So if you're looking for that minimal extra oomph, that flair, that piece that will complete your summer look, then look no further because I have a code that you guys can use to get 15% off your next purchase, along with an additional free strap of your choice. This summer, Nordgreen has a plethora of watches to choose from, along with a wide variety of watch straps. Some of their strap selections include nylon, rubber, mesh, or even link. So if you're looking to support a great cause and care about the environment and sustainability and want to stay classy while you're at it, then look no further. So if you guys are interested, you guys can check out the link down in the description box below and don't forget to use my code Elias to get 15% off your next purchase. Thank you again to Norgreen for sponsoring today's video. All right, with that being said, let's finally talk about the heartbreak that is the Song of Achilles. So ever since I've joined BookTube in general, I feel like this book has literally been on every single person's favorite list or favorite books of all time. And you know what? It's warranted. It deserves to be up there. It deserves no less, no less than five stars. I've heard about this book before. I've seen it everywhere and I had doubts. Let me tell you, I had so many doubts even prior going into this book. I didn't think I would like it, much alone love it. And the only reason why I read it as I did is because I had to read it for the Late Night Book Club, a book club I'm co-hosting with two other people, Noel and Joel. I was like, all right, fine, I'll finally read it. It's like their favorite book of all time. And I was skeptical, you know, because just gonna give you guys some little backstory here is that I personally have some knowledge, some baseline inkling of the Greek mythology and its history because growing up I was homeschooled and I was basically only allowed to read certain books and Greek mythology with all its gods and myths and legends were the closest thing I can get to reading something that was almost akin to fiction. So I thought it was just really magical and just amazing and incredible and hence why the Percy Jackson series remains one of my beloved series of all time. 
So going back, I did read the Iliad when I was like a teenager, and I did a huge research paper and character analysis on it and certain characters. I think I did my character analysis on Odysseus, um, who is one of my favorite characters in the Iliad overall. So prior before reading this book, I already knew the backstory history of Achilles and Patroclus. I knew what was going to happen. I knew the end game. So knowing that already just deterred me from wanting to read this book in general, and I've heard that the writing was incredible. But not gonna lie, 20 pages in, I was like, I don't see nothing special. Like, where are the claims? Where are your receipts? I'm not seeing any flavor here. Boy, was I dead fucking wrong, because clearly, I fucking love this book. So knowing the full extent, the history of the Iliad and its story just really put me off from reading this book in general. And honestly, when it comes to hype book nowadays, especially on booktube and on book Twitter, I generally tend to stay away from just because I most of the time become overly disappointed. <clears throat> Kingdom of Flesh and Blood by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So, that goes without saying. Also, I heard that this book had a sudden resurgence of popularity due to it being featured on Book Talk, and I think it climbed its way back into the New York Times bestseller list, as it fucking deserves, because nothing less for my kings, Achilles, and Patroclus. So going into this, as I said before, I read this for the Late Night Book Club, and it took me around a month to finish this book. And usually it doesn't really take me that long to complete and finish a whole ass book. But because I put it down after 20 pages because legitimately I was disappointed. I was like, because I was expecting sort of a novellic, that's not even a word, a novel take on this book overall. Like I was expecting more of your like almost like standard YA sort of take on it. I was expecting this book to take us on this sort of like YA journey or YA feel. I don't even know why I was expecting for it to be sort of YA because it's adult. 20 pages in, I can immediately tell it was going for more of that lyrical feel, sort of that parallel, that mirroring of the voice of the Iliad. Because if you've read the Iliad, you know it's like essentially a song. It's very complex and the way it was written, it can be hard to get into, let alone understand. And so I feel like this book captured that essence of the Iliad perfectly. It wasn't overtly heavy-handed in a way of its prose. It wasn't hard to understand or overly pretentious, which I fucking loved. And I was here for it. So 20 pages in, I put it down and I was like, hmm, I'm not really into it. I'm not really here for it, you know? So I put it down thinking, man, I'm gonna have to trudge this book like a week or a day, who knows, with me when it comes to books before the book club, before our live show. And so I put it down and didn't really think too much about it. However, closer to our live show, I downloaded the audiobook, and guys, let me tell you, the audiobook is a fucking game changer. The narrator, he does a fantastic job of differentiating and just narrating distinctly about these characters and the whole story overall, so I would highly recommend listening to this book on audiobook because it is just more poignant. I guess it'll give you the true and raw experience of this book, listening to it on audiobook. I do plan on rereading this book, and reading it from the book entirely because I listened to the audiobook around 80% of the way and for the rest of the 20% I just read the entire book. And I kind of wished I listened to the whole audiobook instead, but listen, it was still a cinematic experience. So if you made it this far, honestly, this whole video is going to be a mess because I did not write anything down because everything that I've experienced is here, 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 and here. There you go. So this entire video won't be spoiler free. Um, just to let you guys know that I will be diving into spoilers because there's absolutely no way I cannot talk about this book without spoilers. If you made it this far, please go fucking read it. Do yourself a favor because believe the hype. Believe everything, every good thing that everyone has ever told you who has read this book. It's the truth because no lies were detected here. So if you made it this far and you don't want to be spoiled, if you've never read the Iliad and you want to go into this book and you're wondering if you should read the Iliad, Fuck the Iliad. Skip that shit because that shit is complex as hell and it is nowhere near the perfection of this book. So I have made my point. Rest my case. And there you have it, folks. Five out of five stars. Go read this fucking book. Thank you very much. We are now diving into, I guess, the spoiler talk of this book. Listen. Okay. <sighs> my legs hurt. All right. So moving on into characters. And I'm pretty sure I can speak for everyone. What we love most about this book is the fucking characters. No one else, not even the side characters. Actually, that's a lie. Maybe one or two side characters. Generally, you tend to root for, you know, other characters in this book. But listen, it's all about the Achilles and Patroclus show, baby. It is just impeccable. The way that these main characters are truly the main characters, 
No other main character comes close. I also want to point out that my favorite main character in here is Patroclus. He is literally the softest boy I've ever read in any book. It was just honestly so heartbreaking when he died and I knew it was coming and everything but just reading it from his perspective especially after you find out that you're still reading from his POV even after he died as a spirit. <sighs> the pain, the pain that I just went through. I was like holy fucking shit. We really went there. Madeline really took us there. It was just heartbreaking and brutal, especially, you know, when Achilles found out that he's dead and just going through his grief mode and rage phase, it was just brutal and agonizing to read and see. Honestly, I mentioned this in the live stream, but I feel like this book should have been called Song of Patroclus of how he carried this entire book on his back. Literally. If it wasn't for Patroclus, I feel like I wouldn't have exactly vibed with Achilles as I did. But you know what? Two peas in a pod, man. It was just... It was just so beautiful. Patroclus, 10 out of 10, my boy. You will forever live in our hearts. And especially that fucking ending. I literally thought Madeline was going to pull a fucking twist on us. A tragic twist that I would have been pissed at if she had pulled this off. But I'm so thankful that she didn't. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. If she had fucking left Patroclus just to just sit there by the tomb for the eternity, never again meeting Achilles in the underworld, Honestly, I don't even know what I would have done, but thank God for character development because we fucking love it. Achilles' mother. Achilles'. Achilles' mother. Well, his mom, Thetis, Thetis, whatever her name is, we don't really care, she finally carved Patroclus' name on the tomb because she finally, you know, character development. We love to see it, you know? And finally, that ending, that last sentence, Truly the most beautiful line in the book for me. In the darkness, two shadows, reaching through the hopeless, heavy dusk. Their hands meet, and light spills in a flood like a hundred golden urns pouring out the sun. And I really truly wished, if I have any like negative things to say about it, I really wished there was just maybe even one more sentence, maybe even just a paragraph, even a fucking page, you know, I wouldn't mind, of just them in the underworld, maybe Achilles saying to Patroclus, there you are, I've waited for you, and now you're here. Or some shit like that, you know? It's just full circle, full circle, man. It was... Uh, you know, it's still, it's okay. You know, it still ended beautifully, it ended happily, I was here for it, it was just fucking perfect. I just wish that extra oomph, you know, that, that teeny tiny extra oomph, just for it to be there, full circle. But it's okay, but fan fiction is here for it. So you can bet, after reading this book, it's me scouring on the internet at 5 a.m. in the morning trying to find fan fiction and fan art for this fucking book. Like, I truly cannot believe how much I fucking love this book and how much I would die for this book. Like, that's the hill I stand by on, you know? It's just so wild for me to even acknowledge that. Like, prior before reading this book, I had immensely strong feelings about this book. Think I would not like it just because of the fucking hype, you know? But if you're watching this video and if for whatever reason you're still here, believe that fucking hype. Like, let me tell you, I feel like I'm a very hard person to please in general. And this fucking book had all the right flavors for me. It was just gay, beautiful, poetic, e everything, 100%. Also, if you want to hear more of the same or more of my thoughts in general with um, Noelle and Joel, we had a live show where we talked about this book. And it was one of my favorite live shows that I've ever done for the book club. And it's on Noelle's channel. You can check it out. Like, the hour flew by so fast. This is my first book I've read by Madeline Miller, and the way her writing is just exquisite. Honestly, fuck past me, stupid me, for believing that the first 20 pages or whatever were just, like, different. Like, ooh, you're too edgy. Acting like I'm not like other books. Boy, was I dead wrong, but I was also right at the same time because this book is not like other books. This book was, like, 10 years in the making. So I did some research online about this book, and supposedly, um, Miss Miller she actually completed a whole manuscript for it and she actually like scratched all that and started over again and took her supposedly 10 plus years on writing this fucking masterpiece and it fucking shows this book came out like in 20 2012 i believe or 2013 and it has aged beautifully like everywhere i see this book is getting the love and the hype that it deserves and honestly fucking here for it okay so speaking of side characters we have essentially, like I don't really count Odysseus or any of those characters, side characters. I feel like they're just there for just plot device, okay? Everyone here is just mainly here to support our two main characters. They're plot devices. We don't really care about them, except for one. We only care for one other side character, and that is Briseis. Briseis was honestly just 
She was a tragedy, like straight up. Most of the time, female characters in gay romances, they get fucked over, honestly. Just another aspect that a lot of um, gay romances tend to overlook and overshadow um, its female characters in general. Briseis, she was just... I fucking loved her character. Like, her ending, I could not believe the audacity of how she went out. There was no flair, there was nothing. Like, she legit runs into the seat and she gets speared in the fucking back by that bitch of a child, Peer Pyre? I, I literally forgot his name already because we don't really care about him. He's irrelevant. He dies anyways. After she gets stabbed in the back in the ocean, um, her body isn't recovered or found and Patroclus hopes that, you know, she is in a better place. And I'm like, that's the ending we get for Briseis? Like the only other character we really care about? But then again, it is a Greek tragedy, so. Oh, and also one more aspect of this book before the end of this video. After reading this book, it just really got me thinking of how much everyone who has loved this book on why they love it so much. You know, in my opinion, I think this is one of the main reasons why we truly love this book so much. It's because of Madeline fucking Miller. She truly has the craft of taking a piece that was all about gods and powerful beings and just triumph and writing that story and taking some of those powerful beings, those gods, those myths, and that legend, that critical and crucial piece of the Iliad of that song, and taking that piece and turning and spinning that tragedy into something that is easily relatable. And that is making the characters themselves human. I think that making these characters feel human, being seen as human and act human, that humanistic quality to it truly is the vital main ingredient into making this book what it is today. Because reading it from the perspective of the Iliad, even though you're reading from these characters' point of views, I just feel like it's different in a way that you don't really read them as human. It's more about seeing how powerful and almost ethereal they are to a certain degree. You don't really see them as human, therefore it's not really grounding. But Madeline, adding in that humanistic quality to our characters, the flair and the flaws of being human, it just made it much more beautiful and just so much more relatable in a sense than the Iliad. I guess that's one of the main reasons why I fucking love it so much is because looking at these characters from below, you know, godlike, powerful, immense, strong, you know, infinite. But then Madeline just takes these characters, grounds them, and you're finally looking at these characters at face value, finally on the same level as everyone else. And that to me just makes it much more beautiful in a sense. The way I fucking love this book more than any other human being is unparalleled. And that is the truth. I think that is pretty much it for this book. Please do yourself a favor, for whatever reason, if you still need that extra push, that extra oomph to read this book, I don't even know what to tell you. If you have been a long subscriber of mine and you're just hesitant to read this book, listen, ignore all the haters and ignore all the less than five star reviews out there because they're dead wrong. And that is my opinion. They are dead wrong. They don't know. They literally don't know the joys of life. Let me tell you, okay? If you want to find love, if you want to believe in love again, then this is the book for you. Again, we support our gay kings, Achilles and Patroclus, their story, their romance, their legacy forever lives on. So, all right, that is pretty much it for this video. Please let me know down in the comments below if you guys have read this book. What did you guys think? Even though I said this book does not deserve less than five stars, I'm still curious to hear what you think, even though you're still dead wrong, okay? All right, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you all soon with a new video. My hair doing okay, yes. Anyways. Um so if you're looking for so if you're looking so if you're looking so if you're looking to support a great cause and care about so if you're looking to support a great cause and sort of parallel sort of that parallel sort of paralleling sort of mirror sort of that parallel that mirroring sort of sort of sort of that par sort of that parallel mirroring the voice of the Iliad, the sort of um, Achilles' mother, Achilles', 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 Achilles mother, Achilles', Achilles' mother. It's just different because they don't have that, uh, it's just different because they don't retain that humanistic, it's just different because I feel like they don't, it's just that same humanistic quality. Because I feel like it just hits, I just feel.